So uh, let's just start with this question. Uh, how many people here are happy? Like, just raise your hand. How many of you are happy? Okay, this is really last. Okay, so how many of you can say that people around you are happy? Just two, three. People around you are not happy. I mean, really? Less, these people? No, no, no. Where, where you are living, where you are studying, or where you are working, are they happy? Do you see them happy? Are they enjoying? Are they enjoying life? Not everyone. Not everyone. So, so what are you doing for that? If you are not happy, how come you make others happy? That's the first point. And if you are happy on the other, what are you doing uh, to make them happy? Okay, okay. So, okay. So, let's start with the straight path thing. Uh, this is a very safe and secure path. Uh, my parents created this path before I was even born. So, there were some things we are born with. You know, let's see. Engineering, job and then get married. Yes. What is this? This is a red trace. We are born with this. I never ask a question. I never doubted anything. I never asked anybody. Nobody told me so. Nobody told me you have to do this. Nobody. But yes, I was just doing this. Science in school, uh, trademarks, engineering, CGPA, preparation for a job, CAD, everything. And then, think about getting a best guy in life. That's all. Nothing else. So, beside this, what is life? Nothing. Life is nothing. So, being an obedient daughter, I never asked a question. I never mistrusted anything. I did everything. I did engineering. I did job. And my parents started looking for a groom for me. So it was going like that. I, I cannot say uh, whether I was happy. I cannot say whether I was frustrated or aggravated. I cannot say anything. It was going like that. See, you will not believe, but my mom is a photographer here. And she wanted this shy photo of mine. And I have no idea how many people must be having this photo in their mail IDs. Seriously. The numbers could be 80 or 100. Here comes our climax. Here comes the story of brilliant student. Uh, no, I'm not talking about myself. But yes, uh, here was this boy of a servant, Rahul, who needed my help in engineering entrance exam. So I happily agreed. I said, okay, it's a matter of weekend. I can do it. So I happily agreed. But the problem was, he was really brilliant. He was damn brilliant. And most of the time, I was unable to solve this doubt. So, in general, I can say, I was wasting his time. So, I called up some IT Delhi students. IT Delhi is like uh, 40 kilometers away from my home. So, yeah, they agreed. But uh, there were charges like really high. Their charges was like 800 or 1000 per hour. And I had to pay that amount from my pocket. And it was a really big thing for me because I was just turning like, you know, basic engineer. So uh, it was a big decision and uh, I agreed. So I can say that I was sponsoring him, but no. I was doing that for myself. I was uh, like really selfless that time. I was thinking about something else. I was not thinking about buying my mom a sari and satisfy myself? No. I was doing it for something that I always wanted. You know, that was the inner happiness. So when I asked you, if you see people unhappy around you, what are you doing for it? You are doing nothing. If you are unhappy, you cannot make others happy. If you are happy, then at least you can have some ways to make others happy. So after seeing him, a lot of students started coming up and there I started 
Agorjing Institute, Torquies. It's for uh, poor students. Anybody could come there and take classes. If they want to, they can pay us. If they don't want to, they cannot pay us. So, you know, uh, seeing them working so hard actually made me realize many things. Really many, many things. They didn't want, um, let's say, they didn't want any kind of free food or reservation. They just wanted guidance and I was giving them that. So that was the point there. So yes, I succeeded in it. I got a huge media attention for that. I got covered up in every newspaper for that. I got covered up in every every possible media. So, but yes, nobody implemented that. Nobody. I, I haven't come up with any person who said, after seeing you doing this, I did, I also did that. No, I never saw that. So this is, you know, we are kind of people. We, we don't want to live happy. We don't want to make others happy. Okay, so one day while on my way to market, I uh, saw one police wala and to rescue myself from him, I took another turn. So the, here I'm talking about another story. So I took another road. Uh, it was a very slummy area and uh, there one view caught my eye. One man was beating this lady like an animal. Like an animal with a rod. Too much rod. So I was not a super woman. I had no Batman features. So I went back to that police wala. Although I was not wearing any helmet, I went back to him. And I said, okay, can you help me out this time? He came with me. He stopped them and took that man with him. So I asked that lady, um, let's, like, let's go to police station and complain against him. She said, no, 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 I, I cannot do this. I said, why? He's my husband. Oh, man. I said, then? So what? He's, he was beating you like an animal. Come on, at least let's go to hospital. No, 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 no. He is my husband. And being a husband, he has a right. He has all the rights. He can do anything. He can say anything to me anytime. He can beat me. He can have relation with other women. He can have sex with me anytime he wants. He is my husband. I cannot do anything. So this frame of mind is not because of, you know, she was not educated. Because she was not aware. She was not aware how our Indian laws are toward women. So uh, this is how EIW started. Empowering Indian women. I, I called up some students, my old students. They were there. They used to go to the communities to teach women basic rights. Very basic rights. What you can do if something bad happens to you, where you can go, how you can file an FIR, how you can register things. So yes, it turned out to be successful, very successful in the initial stage, but failed badly after that. And the reason was because I was not giving any kind of free food. I was not giving any kind of free material. I was not giving them anything. We were just going and calling them out, hey, come here. You know, if your husband beat you, what you can do? So students were doing like that. So nobody was interested. Hey, it's a waste of time. So it failed very, very badly. So there I was. After seeing those ladies, I wanted to leave my job. I wanted to register that as an NGO. That was the time. I said, I need more volunteers. I need more media attention for this. Because I need to help this out. I need to help in, in any way. So there I was a puzzling path. You know, I am sure all of you must have gone through this path. A puzzling path. 
where you want to do something of your interest but forced to do something else by society. Is it true? I didn't want to be in the rat race anymore. I just didn't want to be in the rat race anymore. I didn't want to do that job. I started hating my friends. I started disliking them. I didn't want to be a part of any more parties, any more Facebooking or any more WhatsApping. So there I was. Like it was a failure. I left my job and I didn't register an NGO. Why? Because I had no support. My family didn't support it. They didn't let me go out of the home for, for many days. They started calling me mad. I started, you know, it was actually a really frustrating time for me. They wanted me to go back to job and start saddle out. They were looking for a, desperately, they were looking desperately for a boy because, you know, she, she has come to this age. Now just get married and do what your illness is. What your loss is. Do, do that. Uh, so it was a frustration time and like all my young generation I too thought of taking a break. As a pick, I went to Himachal Pradesh for one week alone and that was a wonderful wonderful experience. Okay, I always thought of riding a book in the mountains. So the difference between those lot of people and me is that I did write a book. I did write a book. I wrote a book. Water once. So there I was a happy person. Because what I always wanted, I did. I finally did. I always wanted to write a book and I was successful in that. So the first thing, if you want to be happy, you have to find out what you want to do in life. Job will always be there. Companies will always be there. Your family will always be there. Your friends will always be there. But you are losing out yourself. You are no more what you were 15 years ago or 20 years ago. So for that, you need to find a reason to be happy. So there I was, I was really happy. I didn't want to come back to home. And, uh, but I came back anyway. In the metro life, I knew my mother would talk about marriage and uh, criticize me for everything. But, but anyway, I came back and uh, again I noticed those unhappy people. So, for that, I started this, SYT, Sell Your Talent. How I started, let me just tell you a short story, I'm, I won't take much time. Let me just tell you a short story for SYT. I was uh, taking my regular walks in the park. I discerned some ladies talking about their family problems. Some are talking about like, uh, oh my children are not doing well in their exams. Some are like uh, this, you know, this food inflation and some are like uh, my husband is troubling me very much. So their problems were going uh, like, they were, they were, their problems were endless. So I, I went to them and I said, okay, so uh, what you are doing for yourself? Your, your children are doing this, your husband is doing this, what you are doing for yourself? So they were like, no. We are taking care of them, we are taking care of our children, we are taking care of our families, our husbands, everybody. So, but yes, what you are doing for yourself? Okay, okay, just tell me, uh, do you have some talent? Yeah, 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 there was this lady. Yeah, 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 I make great pickles. So, why don't you sell them? I said, why don't you sell them? So, uh, she was like, 
who will buy from me? I know I can make great figures, but who will buy from me? So I was like, okay, the same people with whom you are sitting right now. Why won't they buy from you? They, if it, if they, they know you, if they are your friends, they will buy from you. So yes, this lady got really interested. And the next week, next weekend, next Saturday, she came with this loud banner prepared by her kids. It said, uh, I make great pickles, try for free. So like everybody was there and laughing. But yeah, the people who knew her, they, they went to her, tried pickles, and she got an order of 3,000 the same day. So I have an example of this lady who was in, just a housewife earlier and now earning 30,000, 40,000 selling her pickles. So there are examples are huge. There are ladies who make great papas. There, there are ladies who make uh, great embroidery thing. So they are selling out there. So let me just uh, tell you the model of this. Uh, we organize it in the park, in nearby park. Okay. So everybody comes uh, comes there with the banner. Uh, I make this. I can make this. And uh, if you want to uh, like buy it from me, try it here. So it goes like this. There is no registration fee. There is nothing. There is no form. There is nothing. So it goes like this. So this is an idea. I want you people to implement this in your communities. So first thing you have to do is what can make you happy. Do whatever. Write a book. Go to travel. Find out the places. Find base place. And come back if you are happy and then make people around you happy. So this is an idea which can work wonderfully in your community. You know, I, I, ne I, never, I never knew the lady living adjacent to my house was such a great artist. I never, I never knew that. Through this SYT, I got to know her. I got to know people around me. I have no life of this WhatsApp and Facebooking anymore. I have this real life with me. I know people around me. I now know them. So this is a way to connect really well with people. You know, so now I am a part of Red Trace. I am doing my job again. But yes, I can see the people around me happy. And now I am a happy rat. So be a happy rat. Even if you are in a rat race. Even if you have to uh, feed your family, even uh, you have to do your job, then be a happy dad. That's the last thing I would say. <laughs>